they sit down to film and they start banging outside. So annoying. Okay, I'm sorry about the banging, they don't seem to be stopping. Um, I feel like I've, it's been a really long time since I've done like a sit down video like this. I kind of missed it. So welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Amy. I love houseplants and apparently I love Hoya. I didn't realise how many I had in my collection. Not that I've got loads and loads and loads and loads, <laughs> but I've got more than I thought I did. And I have more on my wish list than I thought I did as well. So I think, if I've counted correctly, I have 16 Hoya to show you. And I'm pretty sure I also have 16 Hoya on my wish list. <laughs> so I don't know, does that, am I a Hoya head now? I don't, I don't know. At what point do you become a Hoya head? What classifies you as a Hoya head? <laughs> I don't know. But what I want to do today is show you my entire Hoya collection as it stands today. I want to talk you through my wish list. I'm hoping I can find a few that I can do some like repotting and retrellising because I recently got, like finally got some gorgeous, gorgeous trellises and I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. So if you're not new here, you'll probably know that I really quite like iridescent things like quite a fan and I reached out to the bearded botanist on Etsy and asked if they could make some um little I haven't even got any in any of my hoyas hang on let me grab one <laughs> so I reached out and asked if they could make some like plant label tags I've just pulled this one out of my Cylindro Puntia Imbricata which I think might be where the booby cactus was made from because I learned something new recently that the booby cactus isn't actually found in nature it was like created and I'm pretty sure it's created from that plant that's a very big side note though but yeah I asked if they could make some iridescent plant tag name things and they said yes and they did it and I've got 50 of them and I freaking love them like how stunning like the pink and then like the blue like I just Oh, I love it so much. Love it so much. So then, I've just lost that down the sofa. So then I reached out and asked if they could make some trifles. And they've done it, gay. They've done it. Oh, so good. I will obviously have their website, not their website. I'll have their le ugh, words. Oh my God, I'm too excited. I will have their Etsy links below for you so that you can go and have a little browse. I'm obsessed. So you can buy the trellises individually, but you can also buy packs of like three different sizes, which is what I did. So hang on. So they do them, I'm gonna get all tangled up. They do them in an arch shape. And they've done their little bearded botanist sign on there. So they do it in an arch shape and they do it in a circle shape. And I, I love it. I love it so much. So I bought the three pack of both the circle and the arch. How amazing. So these are the small sizes. Now, I have messaged them and they said they're going to replace it. I did say they didn't need to, which I'll explain in a minute. But I didn't have the medium sized arch <laughs> in my packet. But this is the small, um, sorry, the medium circle. So compared to the small one. And actually, whilst we're doing comparing, let me get the big one out as well. So then this is the big. I, oh my God. Like, I mean, even if you potted one plant on with like all of these, how stunning would that be? I love it so much. Um, and then this is the large arch and then <laughs> the small arch. So I've told them not to bother replacing the medium arch because they, sent me quite a few freebie things in that package like they're they're aware it was me ordering and they knew I was going to be sharing it with you and I've bought from them a couple of times and they were just really generous and put in some extras so the extras included a clear version of their stakes so you can now see the medium 
arch because I got clear versions of the circle and the and the arch and like this is it's basically invisible like it it's like non-existent I love it so they sent me both sets of the set of three trellises and then they also sent me which oh, I freaking think these are so freaking cool oh my god they sent me like these little stakes but with these discs that you put on and then like oh, words oh my god specifically for like anacacias and theriums think of those plants where like you can hook hook the um petioles and have them all stand up together like that is incredibly clever i also just want to point out that it is a clear item you just have to peel off the plastic covering and they do these in three different sizes as well but sadly obviously we know what the postal service is like these larger ones snapped i'm gonna glue them and i've shared it with jordan and sam um just so that they're aware because these were like it was all packaged in one box and these were sat on top of the trellises and i think just with probably things being piled on top it's just a bit of a snap thing so i'm going to glue them um because that will they'll they'll work perfectly fine once they're glued but like how how beautiful like i oh i mean even the clear ones i'm a fan but i just oh, oh so beautiful so i've got some of my Hoyas on some trellises already and they're fine they are they're lovely they're you know there's some clear 3d printed trellises they're good i've got some on homemade ones which are slightly less sturdy for example this one's not the best example but it's it's leaning um <laughs> it's not looking that good so what i'm hopeful today is that as i show you the hoyas i will be able to pick ones out that I could repot and retrellis today. My only worry is that some of them, some of the ones that I want to do that with are growing new leaves and some of these Hoyas I'm like I'm not nervous about when it comes to new leaves but some of them they just I can't seem to get it right <laughs> with helping them keep their leaves and I have wondered every now and then if I've got flat mites but I don't feel like I do like I'm pretty sure it's a watering issue with me like it just well <laughs> it's not like I've got leaves coming out deformed they either come out and they grow or they come out and they get so far and then they just completely fall off <laughs> and I, generally the plants dry at that point so I feel like it's a me issue and not like a flat mite issue but feel free to tell me otherwise if you see any damage or anything that looks flat mitey I'm open I'm open to the ideas but I've been talking for a good 10 minutes now and you've not really seen any plants like that one didn't kind of do it so let me stop showing you my lawyers I don't know what all this is about I've been doing it a lot recently it's like a new a new thing <laughs> okay I've shuffled a little bit just so there's a bit of blank background so that you can like really appreciate the Hoyas so I'm gonna start with my bigger ones because let's face it Hoyas often come in like small forms don't they because some of them can be pricey and they can be slow growing. I've got two big ones that I'd like to share with you before I just like I've just got like a little a little bit of like a grief message to share that if you followed me like back in the day on Instagram when I was like way way more active over there you'll know that I used to have quite a large Hoya compactor and it bloomed oh it bloomed so much like it never grew a new leaf for me <laughs> ever but it bloomed so much. And those little fuzzy pink blooms, they were so cute. Steve hated the smell of them, but they'd, they'd send out a scent in the evening and it was like, not the nicest smell in my opinion, um, but I could tolerate it for how beautiful the blooms were. I really, really, really love that plant. And then it got mealy bugs and the Hoya compactor is, it's one of those plants that like, if I think of a pest that I really wouldn't want to get on a plant, it's a mealybug infestation on a Hoya compactor, like just so hard to deal with. 
and a couple of my hoys at the time got mealybugs and I don't I don't know why I didn't prioritize treating that one and it actually ended up out on the balcony in the middle of summer the leaves scorched the mealybugs they they didn't like overtake it was outside and I guess probably you know other predator bugs kind of sorted them out but it got really scorched it got really damaged and it just it wasn't savable in the end like or it, maybe it would have been savable but it would have been such a tiny little bit that and it wasn't it wasn't growing leaves for me so I just it's gone and I'm still devastated about it and we're probably this is probably like two years on now I'm still devastated that I don't have that plant in my collection and I would quite like to replace it I just haven't seen the size like and I think if Steve saw that plant come into our home again he'd be mad <laughs> he hated that plant so much but yeah I miss that plant so I just I just kind of wanted to say that if you're not new to, to me and my Instagram I mean you know about that plant because it was quite a staple for a while yeah I, ha I didn't really talk about the fact that it, it's gone so now, now you know but on to the plants that I have <laughs> so the first one I want to share with you is really dusty but it is my Hoya polyneura and oh, I love this Hoya so much look how beautiful she is like her she's so dark and I've had her for quite a long time. I've taken cuttings. She was one that also got mealybugs at the same time as the compactor. And it just felt more doable to treat this one. And actually, I treat I had to treat it by cutting it all up, throwing away the root ball, soaking it in horticultural soap. Like literally, I filled my bath up <laughs> with water and horticultural soap and put the cuttings in there and then like isolated it for a really long time and that one treatment did it it got rid of the mealybugs but I did chop my plant up um but yeah I chopped it up I sold some sections and I planted these ones all back together and I just I love this Hoya so much she is stunning she really definitely does need a repot obviously she's not one that I've put on a trellis but yeah this I need to repot this real bad I haven't actually done anything since I potted it up from the mealy bug treatment so it's probably been in this pot for two years loads of roots coming out the bottom definitely needs some tender loving care but that is my first one the next biggest Hoya that I have in my collection is my Hoya linearis which I adore like this Hoya is so chill and easy going for me it's like long it's fuzzy i don't know if i'll be able to show the fuzziness like if you're not familiar with this hoya the leaves are actually fuzzy and soft to touch this one was another prolific bloomer for me um when i kept it in like hanging directly in my south facing window since i've moved it out of the window and i've put it on my plant shelf it hasn't bloomed so the sun is obviously like direct sun is obviously really important for this one to bloom this one is a, actually it's a late bloomer like it blooms in the um the end of october november months it's like an autumnal bloomer not like a spring growing season grower um bloomer but it's still growing we've got like new growth popping out and i still love it this i actually had a much bigger one of these um and when I got my shelves and I was moving it from the window to my shelves, I chopped it because I was like, it's too big to fit on the shelves. Um, and I actually sold it to one of my friends. I think she's still got it. I don't know, but yeah, I'm really enjoying, enjoying this one. <sighs> Christ alive, that was like the longest buzzer bell ever. Um, was I finished talking about the Hoyland Harris? I don't know. This one's in a pond, like semi-hydro substrate, just in this kind of utensil pot. And I, I wanted it to be in semi-hydro so that it was quite weighty, so that it could whew, sit and hang on the shelf and not, not fall off. Um, 
I feel like I've heard lots of people talk about them like struggling with propagating this Hoya, but I typically, I think the only way I actually propagate Hoya is in water. And I've never, I've never had it fail. I've always had the root. There's a fungus that crawling around right there. <laughs> yeah, I always root my Hoyas in water and they've always been successful. I don't have any other information. <laughs> I find this Hoya a really easy one to propagate in root, so try water if you haven't. <laughs> um, what else do I want to say about this Hoya? Don't want to jinx it. But I've never had pests on this Hoya, other than like, you know, fungus gnats. Never had mealybugs, never had thrips, never had spider mites on it. Those are the only pests I've really ever had, but they've never gone near this plant, which I'm very, very grateful for. So yeah, second biggest and oldest in my collection. I'm not going to keep going in size order, but this is like my next biggest, I'd say. This is my Hoya Kaspergii, and I... I say this every time I show it, I don't feel like people talk about this Hoya enough and I don't know why, but I love this Hoya, love this Hoya. This is actually a good one to see the trellis situation. So this is a homemade trellis and clearly it's not stable at all, <laughs> just full on leaning. But I absolutely adore this trellis. I love the leaves, this little leaf that's like a bum. <laughs> absolutely adore like how silly is that leaf shape but typically they are round they are not like a dark dark green but a good green like they're a good colored green and they have all got a slight little like speckle to them and yeah I just love them some of the leaves are almost like square like it's kind of almost got four sides to it which is hilarious but I I haven't got anything else to say, but I adore this one. Obviously, this is going to be one that's going to get a new trellis. Like, I don't know if it'll be big circle or medium. So it kind of matches up perfectly with the medium one. Oh my god, how exciting is that going to be? I don't, I don't know if I'll put it onto a bigger one. I have to see. This is just one vine that's wrapped round um yeah i'm gonna stop talking about this one now but <laughs> i love it so much <laughs> i wonder if i can like can i precariously put you here this is my wish list by the way okay next i'm gonna go with this one she's tiny hoya carrie i'm sure you're already i'm sure you're familiar with this hoya it is just literally in a cup oh the substrate for this one is a semi-hydro situation with a lecker layer at the bottom just for your information i don't really have any rhyme or reason no preference for my hoya substrates quite a lot of them are in this kind of really chunky semi-hydro mix a lot of them do have like orchid bark or cocoa coir in there with it so it's not like a non-organic mix but they're all in different things this one's in a soil a soil mix um, this one I bought from House of Kojo years and years ago and when it arrived it had some like cute heart-shaped leaves like this and then some real funky ones that were not heart-shaped and I really didn't like it and then it shot out like a long runnery thing with some smaller leaves on it and I just I chopped it up it did bloom for me as well my god it's drippy the blooms on this guy it, they are so drippy and sticky it was really annoying <laughs> I'll probably cut up a dunkle off if it comes again because it was that annoying but yeah I chopped it all up after it bloomed because I wanted heart-shaped leaves and it's taken well this is the only surviving node <laughs> left the other ones died I'm a bit worried about this stem like the roots look healthy that I can see but the stem doesn't look amazingly healthy I feel like I need to look at that one um but yeah, these are the only ones I've got, I've, words. this is the only one I've got left. And I hope you can see, here, there is a growth point with some leaves happening, which is very exciting. It does make me more nervous that the stem looks a little bit sus, like this down here just looks a little bit strange. But my God, I really want a beautiful 
Hoya Carriale. There's this one picture on Instagram, which I'll put up if I can show it, but if I can find it. And that, that was the photo that made me fall in love with this particular Hoya and that's the Hoya I want. I want this to look like that. <laughs> I hope I'm showing it. <laughs> so we've got Big Dreams. I think I would like to get this one on to a trellis, maybe like a medium sized arch, maybe. Like, can you envisage just loads of, ooh, loads of hearts like growing up? Maybe. I am a, I'm really worried about, it's definitely attached to some roots. Like those roots look healthy, right? But I suppose you can have healthy roots that are rotting stem. I'm worried about that one. I'm going to put this one here. I think these ones here will be the ones that I attempt to do something with. Um, okay, this Hoya I don't actually know the idea of. I've had it for years, years and years. It's so dusty. <laughs> oh, I hate dusting my plants and you can tell. I've had it for a really, really long time. And I just don't know what it is. It's never bloomed. Oh my God. It's never bloomed. So like, that's not helpful. But if you have any idea what this Hoya could be, I would greatly appreciate the ID. Thank you in advance. There is a fungus gnat. I got it. <laughs> so yeah, if you know what this is, please let me know. This is one that's on a little, a little round trellis. I think I'm going to keep it on this one um, just because this small one is actually just a bit bigger than what I would like it. Like if I can get this one to grow, I would just quite like a little, a little teeny weeny circle of it. So yeah, this one's in a semi hydro kind of setup as well. Not much else to say. I don't know what it is. I'm going to say about it. Okay. Next up, I'm going to talk about this one because I just keep knocking it. Another one, the original one I showed you on my DIY trellis. This is one that I shared recently because it was pushing out new leaves. I bought it and thought it was a Meredithii, but I don't think it is. It came with a few different Hoyas from Indonesia. And at the time, that was what I knew this one as. But in that order, there are also Hoya Tanganus, if that's how you pronounce that. And I do wonder if this is actually one of those. I don't know. I know on the video that I shared it recently, some people put some suggestions in the comments. I've not been very hot on my comment replying at the moment. Standard me. I haven't properly looked at what the suggestions could be, but I know some of you did suggest what this one could be as well. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, this is one that I definitely need to sort out. There is a vine here, which you can see has died. Um, it had started dying before I wrapped it round the trellis. It just, it's taken a really long time to <laughs> completely die off. Um, so yeah, this one's in a weird substrate. It's like, it's got, it's like, it's got like a semi-hydro reservoir at the bottom, but there is definitely some foily substrate up here. So I don't, I don't really know what I did there. <laughs> this is another new leaf it's put out recently which is quite dark and interesting this is the backs of the leaves they have like a kind of maroony purple vein down the middle of them it's cute i really like it and i want it to like i want big leaves i want more big leaves basically more big leaves please so i guess that's one that i put over here because i want to fiddle with it i'm just gonna put it on the floor I've been filming for half an hour. This is going to be a long video, isn't it? Um, next up, this is my Hoya Curtitii, and I've actually got this in Fruval Stratum. It's the only plant now, I think, that I have just purely in Fruval Stratum. I had started filming a Fruval Stratum testing propagation video with a few different genre, genus, geni of plant, and Fluval stratum dries out fast and your girl is an underwaterer so we don't get on as you can see this one is literally it's just got it's just got a puddle of water in it <laughs> it's just sat in water i'd almost say this is more of a water prop 
thinner fluval stratum prop because it is just drowning in water and needs to be repotted. This is actually one that I consistently think about getting rid of. In theory, I love this Hoya. I love the shape of the leaves and I love the colour of the green and the speckling. Like, it's such a cute shape. Like, look how adorable that is. But there's something about the way that mine in particular is growing that I'm not a fan of. And I see photos and videos of them looking stunning, but I don't feel like mine looks like that. And it's not one, it's not one I don't think, oh, do I? Maybe I need to just look at styling. Like it's not one I wanted originally on a trellis. Cause I like it, or the photos I've seen, I've liked it dangling, but I don't know, but I can, I think about getting rid of it every now and then. And then I just look at the shape of the leaves and they're just so unusual that I just can't, I can't let it go, but I don't love it, but I want to love it. <laughs> Help. So yeah, Hoya Cotizii, which I should probably do something with. I'm not going to do anything with it today. I don't know why I'm bothering putting it there. <laughs> I know I'm not going to do anything with it. So next I've got two little propagations in some water together that I got at the rig- Ugh, words. <clears throat> so next I've got two little like propagations in water that I got at the recent Another Plant Swap in Bristol and I love them so much. So I've got a Hoya Serpens here and a Hoya Wilbur Graves. Look how cute. Right, okay, let's just focus on the Wilbur Graves for now. Like, look how stunning that leaf is. And you can see this side of the water is it rooted. So it's got some good roots in it. And then this is the Serpens, which is really hard to show you, but it's a gorgeous Hoya and I'm so excited to have it. And that's also rooted really, really well. There is this tiny, I don't know if I'll be able to capture it on camera. Mm. Can you see that little bump next to my thumb? <laughs> Those are two new leaves starting to grow. <laughs> so tiny. I kind of want to chop this serpents up into individual nodes and like start a full plant from fresh because this one little vine it's going to take a long time to make a plant but if I chop it into nodes now I might get more shoots coming out quickly. I do want to do something with these today. Cute. Next I'm going to show you another Hoya that I got from the plant swap. It is this guy and I can't remember the name of it. Is it a Latifernia? Nope, cannot remember what it is, but it's also rooted really quite nicely. This leaf was like really soft when it when I got it from the plant swap and it's just kind of hardened at what it was looking like. Um, I knew it wouldn't reach the full potential that it has and I'm gonna leave it on there for now, but I might chop it off at some point, but I've always wanted a really big like dinner plate leaf Hoya and I'm hopeful that this might be, might be it. I do want to do something with you. So I'll put you over here. Um, no, I'm not, cause I'm scared I'm gonna knock that over. <laughs> While we're on the subject of plant swaps, last year, another plant swap came to Bristol and I picked up this Hoya, which I th think is the Hoya Verticulata. I think, I don't know. I got it in moss in this little pot. I really need to get more of these little pots. They're adorable. Um, and I have kept it in a little pot, but I've put it into a soil substrate. This is the one that has the like black edge and I love it. I cannot wait for this to grow big. This new leaf is new and it's still stretching out and hardening off, which I'm very excited about. The other leaf on that, because Hoyas often come out twos, like in pairs, don't they? But the other one does look like it's died, which again, like why is one growing and one not? Can you see the kind of dead one? 
like what what did I do wrong I think it did dry out a little smidge I've got it in this little like cup so I can put water in it I'm reluctant to do anything with this one until that leaf is fully hardened it's one I don't feel confident with but that will go on a trellis maybe maybe like the the little the little iridescent one <laughs> so cute okay who shall I show you next this guy can't remember the name is Hoya flagellata flagellata I don't know this is one that is quite new to my collection still this is one I got from grow tropicals it arrived with these two vines much longer and they have died back this section is dead I just haven't removed it yet I got this plant because the leaves reminded me of the Hoya quadratra sumatra <laughs> and I think might be wrong I think this is like a version of that plant I think but I might be wrong um but these are the leaves like are they not very similar to that plant the kind of ruffled rigid edges the dusty speckling it's so cool the only thing is <laughs> the leaves that it's put out in my care are not that edge like this was the first leaf it put out in my care and I'd say it's pretty hardened off now. There's not a lot of splash, which I don't mind. But where is my crinkly edge? Where is it? And this one that it's put into pushing out, I, I let it dry out so it's a bit deformed. This also doesn't have a crinkly edge. Why? <laughs> I bought you for your crinkly edge. Where is it? <laughs> I don't recognize your edge. I'm really sad help if you know what to do help please this is hilarious to me this kind of like bouncing around <laughs> obviously this guy needs a trellis <sighs> i am really sad like i want the crinkly edge like it's it's not that it's not a beautiful leaf i just i bought it for the crinkly edge and i don't have a crinkly edge there is a lot of growth up here it's really cool let me see if i can show you so there's like obviously the big new leaf and then there's two other new leaves starting to grow i need to definitely give this one a water again but maybe medium clear have i already suggest i've already suggested that one for the hoya carry eye haven't i maybe a different medium one obviously i can buy more <laughs> but i feel like this would look better on a arch as opposed to a circle. I'm gonna put you there. Another one that I got from Grow Tropicals is this guy. Oh what is it called? Hoya Arith Arith I'm not very good with my Hoya names. <laughs> um this is another kind of like crusty one. It's actually, it's actually crusty because I need to clean the leaves, but I haven't. But it's got the kind of like interesting veining. Oh, there you go. You can see it better there. Can you see? It's like, it's got the 3D veining. The backs of the leaves are quite cool. Kind of like, it has got like veining on the back too. It's still got its two vines that it came with. It did start growing a leaf that died off, I think, because it dried out. But you can see ooh, you can see that there are two two new leaves growing there and then both of these vines oh my god it's so hard to like hold it so the two vines that it came with the top section of them did die off but they've both shot out new vines which are kind of just growing into the ceiling of my cabinet at the moment so i probably should definitely probably should definitely give this one a trellis again I kind of want it on a on an upright one maybe it could look cute on a round one I don't know I don't know I'm gonna need to figure this out aren't I? I'm gonna just need, need more trellises apparently but yeah I I'm hopeful 
Like part of me is wondering whether once these have grown and hardened off, do I chop these? Because a lot of the nodes down here, while I know that they can sprout new growth, all of the leaf, like the leaf sections, can you see this is a good example here? I'm gonna cover up my face. Here, <laughs> a leaf has started to grow and then it's fallen off. So like I don't know how readily it would grow a new growth point so like if i chopped this off root of this section could get like a fuller plant going i don't know i like i like hoya clearly and i've got lots that i want to get but i'm not the most confident with hoya i feel like they're all so different like some of them like my polyneura my linearis my compactor when I had it, I felt really confident with them in knowing how to care for them. This guy I feel confident with, knowing how to care for it. But then there are ones like these where I'm just like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing with you. And they just, it just, they feel so different. So another one that I feel very much like that about is this guy, which I've had for a really long time. This is my Hoya Dekie, which like this is not a very good dekie, no offense. Um, like I feel like the nicest leaves are probably these two here and they're hard to show you because of the angle that they're growing on. This is one that consistently, consistently starts growing and then I let it dry out and a leaf drops. It's like if there isn't water in this vessel, which is really hard to see, as you can, it's an algae ridden vessel. This is a semi hydro one. If there isn't water in there, it's like, nah, you've lost it, you've missed your chance, I'm gonna kill off this leaf. And I don't know, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you it. I might take a photo and put it in, but there's like a stack of attempted growth points. This is one where I've wondered if I have actually got flat mites. Um, but when a leaf does grow, it grows perfect. It's just, if I let it dry out, even a little bit, or like maybe, I mean, maybe, <laughs> just calls it stress, it, any any kind of stress, it just dies. And I really hope that's not the case because there are actually, there's a new leaf here and on the other side of where that one's growing, there's another new leaf. And like, if it is something to do with stress, then they're probably just gonna die off, but fingers crossed like it's got this vine that did have a leaf growing on it and that died off and I really do love the Hoya Dekie but I'm this is probably the one I struggle with the most I'm really sad about it <laughs> not gonna do anything with that one whilst those leaves are coming out absolutely not <laughs> I think I've got two left to show you so this one is not new, new, but fairly new. I remember unboxing it on my YouTube channel. Um, it is, which other one did I get? Oh no, it wasn't, it wasn't a Hoya, it was a Rip's House. I bought this one from, nope, can't remember where, I literally had, I had the name. Where did it go? I actually did take my ADHD medication this morning and I just feel like I didn't. Harriet's Plants. Yes, it came back. I bought this from Harriet's Plants, what's my head in? Last year, it was teeny, 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 teeny weeny when I got it. And the leaves were like, they weren't the color I wanted them to be. <laughs> they were kind of like a limey green. Like I think maybe they had too much light, possibly. I'm glad that they've, all of these leaves down here were grown with Harriet. They have gone darker, which is great. And it has pushed out quite a few new leaves with me, like all the shiny ones, which I'm loving. I did have it on a circular trellis and I recently took it off, very scared because I didn't want the leaves to die that it was working on because I wanted to take it off and slowly make it a trailing Hoya. Did I say what this is? It's a Hoya Matilde <laughs> because I've just seen some photos of Hoya Matilde just trailing down and look at that cute little leaf just there. I love them trailing. I really, really do. 
so yeah I'm hopeful like I was really really nervous I took it off of the like trellis and then I've just left this section kind of leaning against the side so that it didn't just like flop down straight away because I've heard that thing if you let Hoyas like vines point down they'll die which can't be true for all Hoyas because some of them do trail like my Polymura, my Linearis, the Clotisii like they grow down but I didn't want like the shock of it going from up and secure to down to like make it die off anyway that was a really long rambly rant but yeah I'm excited by this one I really really do love how dark speckly and just shiny these new leaves are it's probably a favorite at the moment actually I just think it's so beautiful I can't wait to have like a whoosh, really long stunning trailing one and last but not least this trellis is doing nothing I don't know why it's even in there <laughs> last but not least is my Hoya Obovata which I love the Hoya Obovata love it so much um I don't love mine <laughs> This is two different plants and like these two leaves here are, they're good. I like these two leaves. They are dark. They are pretty round. Like this one's solid. It's a good round shape. Love this. I want a plant of this. These down here are like a weird light colour. This is the newest leaf on it. Nope. This is the newest leaf on it and it's got some weird colouring to it. Weird shape. I'm not a fan. I've been actually been thinking I might just chop this off and start again. Like some of the, like this leaf is a beautiful round shape. This one's nice and round. It's just not the right colour. This is another one similar to the Dakey that I've struggled with. Like I've not always been very successful with growing the leaves when they start coming in. I've no idea what happened to this one. It's like something took a bite out of it, but that's just how it grew. It's like a claw. <laughs> um but yeah any advice on how to make this one happy because i really would love like a huge overvata like think charmaine from unplanned parenthood her overvata that's my dream i want that i want that where this is not that i really want to love you <laughs> so i think those are all the hoyas that i have in my collection currently i don't know how to do the next bit i'm not gonna lie having filmed for 50 minutes nearly i'm losing a bit of steam and i actually don't know if i'm gonna end up doing any repotting or trellising or anything today because i'm just feeling feeling a little bit like i'm running out of steam and i need to learn to respect respect my body and my brain when that happens because otherwise i'll burn out and I'm so fed up of burning out gang, so fed up. I'm gonna talk you through my wish list, just because, and then, ooh, what I might do is talk through my wish list now, and then I might do some Hoya trellising planty chores and put that footage over me talking through my wish list. Could that work? I think that's what I'm gonna do. So here goes my wish list. This is in no particular order, but the first one I've written down is the Hoya Carii Variegata and specifically the Albo Marginata one. Like the inner variegated one is also pretty, but for some reason I, I'm more, oh, is it that way around? <laughs> I don't know anymore. I feel like I, maybe I just want both. I'm trying to think, is it the Albo? Sorry, not the elbow, like the outer variegated. I think actually it's the inner variegated one that I like more. <laughs> That's so funny that I can't remember which one it is I prefer. Maybe I'll be showing it on screen, the one that I actually prefer. The next one I've written down, I don't know if I'm going to say it correctly, Py Pyro Pyroi Pyroifolia. This is a stinking cute Hoya. It's like, it looks like the leaves are tubular shaped which I'm sure they're not I mean they might be 
but it's like fuzzy oblong shaped leaves for it. I think they're really really cute and like that one a lot. I've got a latifolia on my list which I don't know if I own, like I don't know if that's one of the ones I got from the swap, but I would really like that, like just a huge leafed hoya, like just, oh, do you know the ones I mean? Like just massive, massive leaves. The next one I've got on my list, so the next two on my list are actually, the leaves are nice, they are nice, they're quite long and like a bit veiny but I specifically want them for the blooms. So the first one is a Sulawesiana <laughs> and this has a really nice fuzzy bloom. It's so cute. Oh my goodness, like stunning. And the next one is a Soligamiana <laughs> and these ones have like yellow and pink flowers. They are so pretty, so pretty. I absolutely love <laughs> love this flower and I would absolutely love to get this one and get it to bloom. Um, I don't think, I have seen the Sol Soli Gamiana for sale, like a little cutting of it. I don't know about the Sulawesiana, <laughs> I don't know how to say these names. I don't know about the Sulawesiana, whether that's available in the UK, I've got no idea. The next one I've got on my list is the Tomsonii, which I know is a bit more readily available to get in the UK. These are like smaller leaves, fuzzy. It's the fuzziness that gets me. I love a tactile plant. I feel like I need to do a video on all of my tactile plants to share with you because I've just got some really good fuzzy ones and I love it. Next one is the Polymura and this is definitely the outer variegated one that I want. Oh, I can with how stunning, how stunning stunning that that like outline the margin it just makes it pop it really enhances the leaf shape i really 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 want this oil i think it's so stunning so next on the list is the retusa which I hope I'm remembering correctly, is the one that like, it's like it grows kind of almost quite big internodal spacings and then there's like a cluster of leaves and it almost looks like a firework or something like that and I just, I really like it and I think this is the one that puts out like on the peduncle it's just one single bloom whereas Hoya blooms tend to have quite a cluster on their peduncle but I'm pretty sure the Retusa just sends like one little one little flower on the end of its peduncle. Next is a Callistophylla, which is just it's the veins. It's the kind of striking contrast of the leaf colour to the veins. I absolutely love, 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 love just that hoya. Like the photos of it, I I don't know. Like it's just stunning. It's so stunning. Next is a Rotundiflora, which. I have wanted for quite a while and they are sort of readily available like on Etsy or eBay in the UK. Um, it's kind of a kind of a rectangle shape and again a little bit fuzzy like I can see little hairs on the photos. It's, it's got a weird texture to the leaf, it's just a bit of an odd one and I am always attracted to it whenever I see it so I've put it on the wish list. I would like to obtain that one. Next up is Manipuriensis. I think that's how you say that. I love this one. The first time I saw it was on Wild Thrones channel and she said it gets called like the butterfly hoya, which you can totally see why. The leaf shape, it does look like a butterfly's wing. I freaking love it. I need this hoya. <laughs> it's not like, I've not come across it in the UK. It's really not readily available, but I want that hoya so bad, so bad. Next up, I have recently realised that I really like the Welsh Mountain Zoo Hoya, uh, which is a very interesting name, <laughs> but I like the shape. I like the shape and the kind of texture of the leaves. I'm really intrigued. I would really love to grow a Welsh Mountain Zoo quite large. I think they are very stunning. 
and then last two so there's one i think you pronounce it as a insularis which i think has like a similar vibe to the retusa but not the same kind of growing pattern but the leaves are quite long and like it's like a narrow rectangle like yeah they're a really interesting shape but they look quite kind of like squared off on the ends of them but they're quite long and thin and i don't know i just it's quite a structural kind of looking hoya and i do like that vibe to my plants and then the last one is one that i go i flip between that is stunning to that's ugly and looks sick <laughs> and it's the hoya madeira and i don't i don't know like i this is probably one that i'll never ever own but I'm so intrigued by it and if, it, if somehow I did have the chance to own it I would definitely take the chance because it's just such an interest the, the variegation is just so interesting like I do feel like it looks a bit unwell but on the other hand I think it's stunning and I feel like I just feel both of those things in equal amounts for this plant <laughs> so yeah I put that one on the wish list too and that is it. I say that's it. That's quite a lot of plants to have on your wish list, and that's just from one genus. Like I have before done, um, so in the past I've done whole wish list videos, and I've decided this year not to do a whole wish list video, but to break it down into genus and kind of share my collection of that genus with you, and then share what my wish list is for that genus. Like. Kind of what i've done today sharing all of the hoyas in my collection and then my hoya wish list i feel like that's kind of how i want to structure my wish list videos from now on but like let me know even if you're not in the uk let me know if you have these plants what are they like to care for i would absolutely adore knowing um if you are in the uk and you have some of these plants and you'd be up for a trade of some kind or you'd be happy to sell me a cutting like definitely hit me up i <laughs> really want these plants um but yeah i don't really know what else to say and i feel like well i think i've been talking about my wishlist plants for about 10 minutes and i don't really know if that's going to be enough time to do the things that i would like to do and have showing you all the things i want to do but obviously i'll be speeding it up a little bit but i, d I don't know <laughs> but i don't really know what else to talk about so i guess i need to end the video <laughs> obviously i've just sat here and talked through my wish list and i'm about to do the the planty things that i want to do so i've got no idea what things are looking like <laughs> I don't know what things are looking like hopefully i've done a good job with some things and like not lost any leaves <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed let me know if you like the structure of seeing like the collection of the genus that i already have and then the wish list of that genus like let me know what you're thinking about that style of video if you as i said if you do have any of the hoya that are on my wish list and you'd be willing to do like a trade or sell me some cuttings please let me know because but i want i want them i want them all <laughs> if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up it really does help and also comment down below what your wish list hoyas are obviously i'm open to adding to my wish list did i add any to your wish list with my wish list or any from my collection let me know i would love to have a chat with you in the comment section and i will i will actually reply at some point to comments I, it just takes me a little bit of time <laughs> If you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe i make planty videos every week i'm also putting out content around decluttering and organizing and i'll be putting out some content around neurodivergence adhd autism all of that jazz this this is the stuff that i'm passionate about if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to watch more from me check out this one i think you'll enjoy it can't wait to see you over there thank you so much for watching see you in the next one bye